Hi, this is Mike Taylor from Web-Based Recruitment, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Frank Durrell, who's Head of Digital at TMP Worldwide. Welcome, Frank. Well, thank you. How are you doing? Oh, doing well. Looking forward to the uh, the event. Good. So you've been busy visiting clients today, I understand. Yes, yes. We've been out uh, actually selling in uh, one client opportunity with location-based services, and uh, yesterday another one with QR codes. So wow. it's all very relevant. Well. Yeah, absolutely. I must admit, with QR codes, um, once you get used to the idea of what they are. You see them everywhere now, don't you? It is one of those things that um, they started out, I mean, they've been very big in a few countries for a while. Japan have used them for, for a long time. But uh, in the UK, it really kicked off around 2009 with a few trials and examples here and there. But today, you can't go anywhere without seeing it. It's certainly to do with entertainment, movies, posters, Blu-rays, uh, they're everywhere. Absolutely. So do you want to give us a bit of a background information about your role as Head of Digital at TMP Worldwide? What, what exactly do you do there? Sure. Um, well, I've been at TMP now for around five months. Um, very much enjoying the opportunity that, uh, that TMP have offered in terms of running a uh, team who look after strategy, development, creative, and the operational side. So in effect, the entire, the entire gambit. Um, we're looking at how we can use communication channels that more and more are becoming digital-based, if not digital entire, to help uh, understand our audience, our candidates, our prospects, attract them, engage them, and leading through to activation and nurtured relationships, which fundamentally will lead to employment. Uh, one of the key elements of what we're doing at the moment is measurement to actually make sure that what we do delivers really strong ROI. So, for example, things such as using QR codes and, and uh, location-based services, all fantastic opportunities, great ways of differentiating a client, but also beyond that, what is the tactical ROI of using a QR code on a piece of collateral as opposed to using that small area of space for something else. Yeah. All of that kind of thing is what we're looking to, to actually deliver a quality solution for. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, measurement is so important these days, and the, the fact that uh, it is so trackable, you know, there's no excuse for not doing it, really, is there? Well, fundamentally, measurement it should be at the heart of what we do. Creativity and engagement and activation are all there to drive a return. And if our clients are spending money with us, I mean, TMP specialize in resource, uh, uh, resource marketing, consultancy. Um, we want to make sure that we deliver a good return for our clients so that you know, when we go to the, the, the results at the end, we have an equation where on one side, on one side is a pound sign, yep. uh, you gave us this budget, and on the other side is a pound sign through either econometrics or actual just return in terms of bums on seats. What did our campaign deliver? And I think more and more, if an agency can't offer that, then then fundamentally, you know, there's something wrong. Yeah. Now, we talked about QR codes at the beginning. Do you want to give us an overview of exactly what a QR code is, for those that don't know? Sure. Uh, I mean, QR codes are entirely a visual piece. Um, so, described by words, I guess the best I could describe them is that they're a slightly more visually interesting barcode. Uh, they were originally used by Toyota to actually track parts during the production of their, their cars back in the mid-90s. Um, they're designed to be read at high speed, much more efficient than barcodes. Today, they are used more and more as almost a visual way of representing information. So rather than having to type a URL or display a URL, even these short URLs, they're not particularly memorable. They're it's a cumbersome thing to have to physically type it in. You can just lift up your smart co your smartphone, so your BlackBerry or your, your Android, your iPhone, take a photo of this small black and white box with little grids inside it, and it will link you through to a website, to uh, an email, to someone's LinkedIn. Well, we're seeing them used on everything from business cards, where you know, it can direct you directly to the person's LinkedIn, uh, or on the back of Blu-rays, where you hold up your smartphone, take a picture, and suddenly you're seeing a trailer of the movie, oh, a trailer wow. of, yeah. the, of, the, uh, of whatever it is. But we're starting to also use them for things like events, QR codes on, uh, on the event stand. You know, if you didn't have the chance to speak to someone because you know, it's such a busy event, so many people wanting to speak to us, take a picture of this QR code and we'll link you straight through to a web form 
where you can just leave your email address and we'll get straight back in touch with you. It's all just very much about quick, almost immediate response. Um, we're finding more and more uses for them, and we're finding more and more acceptance of them. Yeah, so There's like, for example, a, a cemetery in Japan where they use QR codes now rather than words on, on tombstones. The uses <laughs> are, are infinite. Yeah, so like, for example, a graduate career fair, that would be an ideal place to have it, wouldn't it? More, it is becoming an opportunity uh, to communicate. It's, it's in a way it differentiates you. When other people are still using URLs, we're using something that's slightly more interesting. But also it's a way that people understand and recognize just yeah. because it's become common. And the fact that it is new, do you, you're finding that your clients will get a, a much better response as a result of using it? The responses at the moment, obviously, it, it still is dependent on the audience. Some right. people, even now, don't know what a QR code is. Yeah. But certainly in the graduate basis, it's phenomenally popular. I mean, it's been built into BlackBerry Messenger for a while, so people are totally accepting of them. But, I mean, we're starting to see the usage of it being such now that other channels are educating on what it is, so we can just now get on with using it. And the BBC, even using cookery programs, uh, Waitrose used it on the end of all their advertising, it wasn't necessarily that effective because they bring it up in the last second and you don't get time to oh, take I see. a photo before it's gone. <laughs> yeah, get off the but couch. More more yeah, <laughs> quick dash to take a photo. Yeah. But there are some really strong practical uses, and we've used them ourselves, where they can add great ROI, especially because it reduces the amount of the cost of printing as well. Yes, yeah. So what about location-based services? How, how are they starting to take off in recruitment? Location-based services have been a very interesting, uh, been on a very interesting journey, really. Um, I mean, as a technology, it's really only been around as long as smartphones have been around because, you know, in the old days, it was everything you saw in your day-to-day, -day, and then you went home, so social media, you saw it, you went home, and at the end of the day, you would write what you saw that day. Whereas now, it's much more of the moment. I see something, I want to react to it now. I see, uh, I walk by a, a, a client's um, store, and I see uh, an advert for a role. I can apply for it there and then. I can check in at a location and immediately be marketed to based on my profile. It is imminently about the real-time ability of location-based marketing. I think it's one of the fundamental growth areas for us as, as recruiters over the next year. So you're literally walking down the road, you've got your smartphone and you go past the office of a, I don't know, an IT company and they have vacancies and the fact that you've got the phone in your hand, they can actually broadcast to you that they've got a vacancy. Is that how it works? There's the ability to broadcast to you, but there's also the ability for you to, in effect, check into that vacancy, say, I'm interested in finding out more about this, but not only I'm interested in knowing about vacancies at a company, but I'm interested in vacancies at this company, at this location. Right. So if there are no vacancies at that particular uh, operation there in that location, where else could there be vacancies in the, in, the pro in the proximity, in the vicinity of where you are? Right. It's fantastic for that opportunity, but also things like career events. Yes. Checking in with a company not only is great for the company to get media insight on you and it's in effect you raising your hand to say I'm interested, but also the act of checking in can propagate into your social network. So location, I am here and I am interested in this thing here now can encourage other people to not only raise their interest, but also to come to that location to find out more. So it, it is very much marketing of the moment i suppose right. is what we would call it and we think it is as i said the the growth opportunity for us certainly for this year and it's the only issue is that you must have a, a smartphone generally to make it work yeah but also the smartphone propagation is such now that that is becoming not a concern and a limiting factor right and it's foursquare i think is the largest one at the moment isn't it Foursquare definitely is the most known. I mean, obviously, Facebook has launched their Facebook Places. Yeah. Google is uh, launching something with Google+. Plus. Yes. There are all sorts of other location-based opportunities. Get Glue, so you can check into different shows that you're seeing and also check into different locations for cinemas, movies, and so on. Uh, Foursquare sort of almost pioneered it and brought it into public knowledge. Right, and a lot of companies are using things like Foursquare now. Um, certainly in the product space, it's been used a, a heck of a lot. 
in terms of, you know, if you are the mayor, you check in enough, you become a mayor. If you're the mayor of a location, you can get a discount off product or service. But by checking in, you are signed up to their dialogue program. So for us, as we talk about nurturing candidates through the process of application, being able to get them to raise their hand and getting enough data about them to contact them is becoming a, a key activational requirement. So location-based services through value exchange let us find out who the person is, where they are, the kind of device they use, and what they're interested in. Wow, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Compared to when I started in recruitment and we put an advert in the paper and waited two weeks. <laughs> it's a totally different world now, isn't it? Well, it's marketing in its purest sense. Absolutely, yeah. The advertising model is it's still there and still works, but marketing, conversation, one-to-one is yeah. so much more powerful. Fantastic. And I believe you've got some great uh, case studies to talk about as well on the 17th of November at the Mobile and Video and Recruitment Conference. Yes, we absolutely do. And we've got some, some great case studies that we at TMP have done, but also wanted to share some great examples, not only within recruitment, but just general great examples and some fantastic ones from across the world that hopefully will give us some, some great steer as to where we could look to move to in the future. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much for your time today, Frank, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the 17th of November. And just to let you know, we have a QR code on the actual conference website now, so feel free to zap it whenever you feel like it. Fantastic. Thank you very much, thanks. and look forward to seeing everyone then. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.